today we are going to we have done call it uh, uh, project is up are open if you want to try it. of uh, posting all the workshops to of going to talk to other profs and if they are okay with that. Uh, seven, eight, nine, and ten to go if people You have read about the string class C++. There is a string class you can treat an alternate array. I can use a single variable. Thing. What string does? Fast. So, what we're going to do it last that it's coming uh, next Monday. Uh, when we hit the inheritance, and I want you to all go through the inheritance and read it ahead of because. The material that we to study about inheritance and neutrality and things like that, they come so tightly and nice that within one thing in two weeks is covered. I'm not. Nicely. It goes through. So, stop on it. So, by the end of the day, hopefully, we'll kind of have a refresher. We're going through all the things to see how they work. Um, and uh, um, yeah, that's that. So, any questions? All right. Remind me of because when I go through this, I lose track of them. If when the break time comes, say I'll give you a break. Otherwise, I'm going to go through the questions. Okay. So remind me of it, please. All right, so uh, we want to, um, and I have everything written, so I'm, gonna, I'm not going to uh, bore you with typing the I usually type it and go through it one by one, and I'm going to explain it to you instead of doing it. Okay, this is not a good thing for something fresh. Something fresh, um, usually when you type, I mentioned at the beginning of because I'm slow. I'm doing. It's there to do. But now we have all. So I can explain. And go. I know it's a boring, but we need to. Think so. Uh, when the time comes, we're not going to think backwards when we are going through it. So I already created the classes over here. I have a class called String that is uh, supposed to represent alternated do all the dirty stuff the engine and everything and make this string class
teach math teachers Uh, so, and because we want to be able to debug this thing and see through it and go through different aspects and turn off debugging and off, we're going to use the same feature we're using for the uh, header file safeguard. Look at the header file safeguard. What does it do? It says if not defined, it's a every token means. Them. So I'm saying if not define, I put a token, and I'm going to say define, I put the exact same token afterwards. So in the compiler, you know the hashtag means it's compiler programming. So you are heading to the program. If that token is not defined, continue compilation. When it hits the next line, immediately it defines that and continues the compilation. The next time it wants to compile, because the that code is not compiled anymore, therefore the header file can be included separately. I'll do the exact same thing in a header file and I'll call it debug. So what I'm going to do, header file debug is a very simple thing. It has just that. First of all, it has its own words. Then it has defined No, no. Yeah, I'm going to make it bigger. I'm going to make it bigger. Sorry about that. Is it better now? It's okay now? Yeah. So when I do the fine SDDF debug, then that can. Okay, so now I'm going to uh, comment that, which means it is not active, and I'm going <clears> to <throat> and I'm going to include my uh, debug uh, uh, header file wherever I want to do the debugging. Okay, so that's that. Uh, so uh, so string.cpp. Let me bring string.cpp. You see over here, debug is included, and that's what I'm going to do. And utils is the dirty stuff we want to encapsulate. So I have a utils over here. Utils has an SDR len. It has an SDR copy. It has SDR cat. It has a string compare. It has a get int that has nothing to do with what we want to do. But so far, these are the things that I want to do. Anything I want to do, either I can use the string or my own. I, I'd rather use my own. For we can add more stuff to this one. Okay. And to, so what we do, and you have see, you, you see this in your uh, uh, project too, uh, because this is now a class, it's not a series of functions, standalone helper functions. I want these things to belong to a class called utils. I want to be able to instantiate that utils thingy and use everywhere to do something like that in utils.cpp what I will do I will instantiate the utils over here this is an example that I that I'm going to give to show you what the difference is so I'm going to make this call it u it's a capital u okay so the capital u my this visible inside utils.cpp and nowhere else. To be able to give it access to exactly like how you create a prototype for a function, so the function becomes available. Well, I create a prototype for the class utils. How do I do that? I go into utils.h. I'll go into utils.h. And in here, I'm saying extern 
utils you. So external essentially means take part. There is an external variable you files. Don't worry, it's there. Use it. When the linker is gonna link, you're gonna find it. Okay? So that is exactly like a prototype. Exactly like a prototype for a variable. And I gave example for the exact same thing. Like, for example, if you want to have access to the value pi to do calcul mathematical calculations, you create a constant long double call pi, and you put some value to it. Then it becomes global. It, it, it has a file scope in utils. But if you want to everywhere else and have it where you can do the exact same thing to that one too. So you essentially copy the variable without its initialization, and then you go in utils and you say extern const long double pi, which means, hey, there is pi. Obviously, pi is just for example. It's a good example for it because pi is a constant thing and it doesn't change. Okay. <coughs> okay. So let the games begin. Now we have the so utils. So u dot len is my strlen. I don't include string header file. I include my my utils if I want to do something, as you see over here. So for my string, let's. Uh, uh, divided into two and have the CPP at left and this one at right. For my string.h, obviously there are two things that I need to have. One is uh, a pointer of type character to keep dynamic. The point by that. Whatever is coming in, I have to have a fixed size. I can uh, set it to whatever I want. And then I'm going to add a feature to this thing that is the most important thing that uh, strings don't have. You cannot know what is the size of a string. No string from the beginning. You hit the null at the end. And when you use the program slow. So because of that, I am going to use uh, a variable for length. C++ has a type defined in it called size underline t. Size assigned into something that cannot any indicate size. So you can put that one. It's just a type. It's an uh, I'm using it's use uh, the aggregate. Uh, Obviously, the pointer is going to be null. It is going to be zero when the thing is created with any constructor. Be okay with this? You know, and then I want to set this into an empty state. To set it to an empty state, what I will do over here is is this. So set empty is set empty. It's a very simple and straightforward thing. I don't have any uh, thing special about it. Let me do something in here too. Uh, make my life a little easier, just a second. Make copy pasting faster, let's put it that way. So, put this one at the left, this one at right. Okay, we're in business. Okay. So set empty is very straightforward. You know exactly what it is. 
So essentially, whenever I want to set my string to, to empty, this is what I do. I set the uh, data to null and set the length to zero. All right. One done, many more to go. Now, I want to have my string in my main. I want to be able to say string s, and I want to be able to say s is Fred Soleil. I want to be able to do this. Okay. Almost all this one in almost all assignment at the moment. All to that many, many and in the walkthrough I put a constructor argument constructor so to make this thing happen I will create a one argument constructor and the one argument constructor of mine works as follows obviously the one argument constructor will be something like this okay so if they don't set anything, I don't have anything in it. And if I'm going to set, set my, my class to it. And to do that, I will create my constructor as follows. I made the, uh, Visual Studio to wrap the lines. So when you see that blue line at blue arrow at the end of the thing, it means the rest of the line is at the bottom. I didn't want it to hide, so I did it this way. Um, so don't get confused. This is just uh, the continuation of that, OK? So as you see over saying that right at the beginning, I'm saying if define SDDS debug. So As soon as I go to the debug header file, as soon as I go to the debug header file, and I uncomment that one, see what happens? Now it gets compiled. So by switching this off and on, I can set my debug statements to be off or on. So I can I want to turn on. For now, I set it to off. That's just the message I'm saying. Create a string out of that C string. And if it's uh, null, I'm going to print nothing. Uh, if it's not null, I'm going to print it what it is. Otherwise, I'm going to say nothing, OK, which means it's null, OK? Um, but the code for the thing is down here. And it's, it's very obvious. I'm doing dynamic memory allocation, so I am seeing what is the size. So if there is anything in the string, I'm going to get its length, put it in m length, uh, allocate m length plus one, put it in m data, and copy everything to it. And if I don't do anything, because I initialized everything to zero in here, it will be in a safe empty state. I do not need to be here. Class is that. So that's that one. So uh, constructor is there. The next thing we need to do is the copy constructor. So for the copy constructor and copy assignment and destructor. So essentially rule of three. So to have the rule of three, I put the destructor first because no matter what you do, you need to have the destructor. Although it is within the rule of three, but a so right at the we're going to do the cons uh, copy constructor and the assignment operator. So the destructor is the easiest thing to do, so we'll do it first. So essentially, we are going to, let me just put this thing up here. You can actually shut these things down so uh, it, it doesn't uh, 
And as you see, it says inactive preprocessor block. So it means it is inactive. It's not going to get compiled. Don't worry. And now in here is the same thing. So the destructor, the only thing that I'm doing, I'm deleting the data. Many people program somewhere don't do means So in here, I'm not putting that. So that's the destructor. Destructor is deleted. Rule of three, we go to the copy constructor and copy assignment. For the copy constructor, uh, uh, I'll, I'll do the lazy part. So as soon as this happens, as soon as I put the copy constructor, what I will do, I'm going to use the assignment operator that I did not even create yet. OK? So I'm going to say, call the has this object with copy. Copy assignment has a flaw. Copy the flaw. Is that copy assignment early. It's not. Crash. Well, because I. My. It has an object in empty state automatically. So the object, so in here, I'm going to say because of initialization, all, uh, all constructions will have a safe empty state to start with. OK, so, so because of the initializations that are over there, uh, to work with them, have a fresh, clean thing to work with. So that's that one. Now let's, let's write the copy assignment. And copy assignment is, has, a, 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 again, series of stuff that you need to memorize and do it blindly, completely like blindfolded, you should be able to do this. Very first thing that you need to do, you know, you need, you know that it's going to return a reference. You know that it's going to receive a constant reference. You know it's going to return a this at the end. That's uh, what an assignment operator does. And you know it needs to do a self-check. Many of you did a self-check in the constructor. A constructor is building a new it's impossible. It means you have an already existing object, one or another. Possible self-assignment protection. Then what we do over here, we are going to say delete everything, set to empty if I am in a good state, which means I need to overload something to see if my string is not empty. Okay? To see if the string is empty, what I will do just to practice how to create uh, type conversion overload. I'm going to overload the Boolean type conversion. Many of you wrote bool operator bool const. Don't do that. Type conversion Many wrote bool operator something. It's not like that. It's operator bool. So it means I am overloading that to a boolean. Which implementation for it is extremely easy and straightforward. All I need to do is to return that. Class. 
there is nothing. No, based on my design, there must be something in it. It's going to return true. And that becomes the Boolean operator. Length, again, same thing, very easy and straightforward because I already have in here, uh, because I already have in here uh, a length uh, attribute, all I need to do in my implementation is to return the length out. And that's going to tell me exactly what the length of the object may be. And now my operator equal has all the stuff that it needs to work. Operator my copy assignment operator. First at line 40, it checks to make sure it's not being self-copied. Then it deletes the current information in the class. The class is uh, about to be overwritten. We do not want to have memory leak. We have to get rid of already existing data. Then I'm going to set it to empty to make sure everything is fine and dandy. Uh, it is an empty thing to work with. Then I'm going to check to see if the right-hand operator is empty or not. If the right-hand operator is empty, I'm not going to do anything. Class, I said it. Life is be done. If the right-hand operator is not empty, however, then I'm going to uh, set the length to the length of the right-hand opera uh, right-hand operand. My apologies. Just nothing good, only a distraction. Set the length to the length of the right hand operand, then over then allocate exactly the size that we need, copy the da data from the other one, and we are done with the copy assignment. Down to this point, all I have over here is a container that can safely contain an terminated array of characters and anything else. it to be able to do. Number one, I want to be able to display it. I want to be able to read it. So to display and read it, to display and read it, I do the standard thing, which is essentially returning an O stream in display, passing the O stream to it. That it's going to work. I'm going to pass it through it and display it. For the read, I'm going to pass the I stream through it and read it. And then I'm going to write the helper functions. All good, you lost. Friends are bad things. You don't use them. So now I can create both of them. Now, even before creating, even before creating the uh, uh, helper functions for, uh, even before creating the helper functions, even before creating the display and read, I can write the code for the helper functions because they are straightforward and they are just using the read and and display, and that's what I'm going to do. So. Essentially, I'm going to say uh, the insertion operator will call the display the OSDR to it. The extraction operator will receive an ISDR passing through the read and with your eyes closed. Every single time you're overloading, just it's out, put your class in it, you're done. If you want to print employee instead of a car, it's car reference. <coughs> now we're going to do the display. How are we going to do the display? So the display is pretty straightforward too. Um, all I need to do is to see if the class is empty or not. If the class is empty, I don't print anything. As simple as that. If the class is not empty, I'm going to print exactly what it is in it using the OSDR. 
So by number 58, I, I am in a good state. Nothing. Okay? Because it's empty. That's this play. I think of this, I gave this challenge already to you. I'm going to write a bad implementation of the read function, and I want you to write the good one. Okay? So the read function, I'm going to actually write. <clears throat> Obviously, I'm returning I stream. There is no question about that. So that read is going to work, right? Right. All right. <clears throat> I can't read through the hole like. <laughs> All right. Yeah, that's much better. <laughs> okay. All right. So. So. For read, you don't know how many characters the user can enter. Type C one for security, which means it will get full deposit. Okay? I'm going to tell yourself and let me know if you've done it. You get extra marks for your. Uh, final. Okay? So, what do I do? I'm going to say create a character temp 496. Anybody knows why I write 496 over there? Why didn't I write, why don't I write 4,000? So like that, it means I'm not going to have any. Anyway, see. <clears throat> so now the very first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to use the ISTR's get line to make sure everything is good. So get line, and I'm going to say over here, put in temp 4,096 things, because I'm reading from the uh, uh, the screen, right? Because I'm reading from a string, it's a very bad implementation. What the, uh, is it? You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to make it even better. <clears throat> because you So what I'm going to do in here is this. I'm going to go in my read function. And in my read function, I'm going to write over here character delimiter. And I'm going to set it by default to backslash n. So you can change it if you want to do, do it manually. OK, so if you want it to read it somehow, then do the read. So in here, I'm going to say character delimiter. And I'm going to put the delimiter in here. So I'm good down to this point so by default. I'm going to use that one for my extraction operator. But if you want to just read it by itself, you can change the delimiter to whatever you want. OK? Yeah, so that's that. So I'm going to say get line. And then after I'm going to say get line, I'm going to say if I string didn't fail, how can ISDR fail, by the way? It's characters. How can it fail? How is it possible? It what how can I see If the delimiter doesn't reach the 496 thingy, if the delimiter is beyond that, it's going to fail. So this is a safe 
function. Although the function is not working more than four thousand, right? What function? If it goes more than that one, it's not. You whatever they. So, so that's that one. So it's, if ISTR did not fail and life is beautiful and we have less than 496, you can make it more if you want to. But anyways, if that's the case, now I can actually start setting stuff. I can say now that I am in a, uh, I am in a mode to read, I'm going to say delete M data, wipe out M data completely, set the M length to the amount of data that you read. SDR len of uh, temp, right? So I set, the, set it to that one. Then I'm going to allocate enough memory to it. So I'm going to say new character. Let's bring it up. New character, m length plus one. And I'm going to copy into m data the value that I got from temp. And str copy, not str line. Copy, and then stop. There we go. Now I can read from the screen. If they actually, it's gonna uh, try to read the temp. First of all, temp is a local uh, array, which means when the read is done, temp goes to wherever it came from. So no waste of memory over there. All right. Then uh, you can even make it. Because that's a big chunk of memory, if you don't want it to be inside your executable, if you don't want that temp to be inside, because temp is a big chunk of memory, right? If you make that character bigger, you kind of your executable smaller and the memory management kind of more efficient, even if you do this. You do character temp is equal to new character 496. So you do that one, and at the end, before you return, you delete it anyway. So like this, you are not even using uh, the. You don't know what that is. Temporary thing is now in here in, in my read in here I don't even need to do anything because when I'm saying when you're extracting call read with one argument the arguments the, the automatic. Working. Now I can do the first thing, uh, uh, first check over here. I can actually uh, make sure everything is good. I can write over here string uh, something. Then I can say s is set to t. Then in here I can say void print string, and I can say over here string string. Come on, you can do it. String arg, okay? By value to make sure copy constructor is called, and in here I'm gonna say c out arg, okay? Actually, let's do the. Uh, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna say. Uh, see out. Hello, what is your name? And do that. Now I can say C N S. Okay. Then I'm gonna say over here, print string S. So. In this few lines, I tested everything that I have done over there. I have a default constructor. I have a one argument constructor. I am getting from the console the string. I am setting one string, another string, and I'm printing the string using C out, passing the S by.
getting here. Okay. Now, if I run the program, and I can add a few more debugging statements over here just for the heck of it. So I'm lazy. I'm just going to copy this. Copy. I'm going to paste it. Where do I paste it? I'm going to paste it. Uh, what do I do? What do I do? Mm, I'm going to say setting. Setting. Uh, this, it means M data, nothing to and I'm going to put the exact same thing over here. So in here, I'm going to say S s dot data actually i don't need to do that but i want to print nothing okay so I, I could just put s over there and this if i put this it's not going to show that okay so in here i'm going to say uh so now if i activate the debugging i can actually see what's happening over here all right um yeah Hopefully, it's going to work. Uh, let's uh, run it. Let's see if we get any compilers. I just did copy paste. It shouldn't be in here. So, what's your name? My name is Farad Salimanlu, and I hit enter. It's going to say something and stop. What the heck happened? Let me see. Okay, what the heck happened? Let's do it. Uh, activate the debugging. Line number? Oh, <laughs> your, my apologies. Thank you. So probably it worked. I just made it wrong. Uh, no, actually, it's, it should work. It should be T set to S. Set to S. And print. So T is something. So no, print T. I wanted to t print T because I want to see if the assignment is working. Let's try it and see if it works first. Then I'm going to walk through it. It works. Okay. Now let's activate the debugging. So I'm going to actually go to debug, and in here do like this. Okay. And then run the program, and this is what happens. See, creating string out of nothing. Create a string out of something. The nothing is the first one that be the default argument, and the other one is with something, right? Now in here, I'm going to say, what is your name? I'm going to say, Ardad Suleiman Lu. And I hit it, setting something. Sorry, I should have had some, something over there. Into a new Fardad. What is a new? <laughs> That's one of the bad things about copy and pasting. I should fix that. Copying Fardat Soliman Lu into a new string, setting nothing to a new yada yada. Let me fix that. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, where is it? Um, hmm. Oh, yeah, it's here. So that's that. There is a problem with the code I have written, in, with the debugging thing I have written in here. I don't want to confuse the heck out of you with what I'm doing now. Let me just do that, right? So hmm. the problem is that when I'm copying, when I'm copying, Okay, it's going to print the copy. Uh, so in here, I'm going to I'm going to say by, and I'm going to remove the end out. Anyways, <coughs> okay. One more time. <laughs> Let's see if it's going to work. Bar that. Okay. 
So setting something to Fardat and copying Fardat into a new string by setting nothing to Fardat. Why do I do, why did I do this? Because I call the assignment to operate in the copy. I want to show that the copy is using the that's why the buy thing is over there. Say killing string containing Fardat. Because I don't <clears throat> anyway, so walk through it and you'll see. Uh, and that kind of shows uh, of <clears throat> passing stuff by value or passing stuff by reference. Pass stuff by value, this is why so many copies happen, you don't want to, okay? So you always pass stuff by reference. But anyways, the rule of three is working. Life is beautiful and just, just let me just uh, buy in here, I'm gonna go. Like that. I'm just going to run it one more time to see if it looks good. And then give me two seconds. Okay, good. <clears throat> okay. So <clears throat> let me turn off the debugging. So, so far, I came to the point that I can only set the string to something. So I do that using operators. So <clears throat> first of all, let's try to add something to an already existing thing. So I want to be able to do this in here. I want to be able to add a string to another, okay? Like I'm doing plus, okay? As simple as that. Now, how can I do that? First of all, and it needs to be in two different ways. So, <clears throat> let's let's do it like this. So, in here, uh, actually, let me change the let me change the the tester. So, so I'm gonna save this. I'm gonna call it a uh, rule of three tester. CPP. Okay, so that's the rule of three thingy. So in here, I'm going to cr create something like this. I'm going to say string, string name, Fred, uh, and I'm going to say string full, full name. Okay, now I'm going to say full name plus equal Fred name. Now I'm going to say full name plus equal uh, space. Oh, that's idiotic. Actually, shh. Um, yeah. I'm going to do this. <clears throat> so I want to be able to add one string. So again, because I have the power to overload operators easily, what I need to do over here is to simply add two prototypes plus equal that receives another string and a plus character. So then what I'm going to do over here, obviously, the, 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 the code for plus equal is very, very similar to, uh, to uh, the assignment operator, but I'll, sh I'll show it to you and we'll go through it. So, 
This is the code for plus equal. <clears throat> so I'm adding a C string to the string. So what I'm doing? First, I want to see if there is anything to If it's not, that's the one we have to make it foolproof. Then, if there is something, I have to say, get me a new M data that has the length of the current object plus the length of the string that is coming in, plus of termination. Then I'm going to say if the current object, if the thing in it, <coughs> copy the data of current object to the new M data. Okay? If it doesn't, current one is going to get caught into it, or by making the first one null. Then I'm going to say C string to the end. So if somebody has something, it's going to be added to the end of it. If it doesn't have anything, it's So therefore, new M data Then I'm going to add whatever the length of the string is to the current length of the object. I'm going to wipe out the old data and make M data point to the new M data. And my object concatenation happens. Okay? Again, walk through this in detail and see. And after doing this, then writing the other one is just a matter of seconds. When I do this, all I need to do is reuse my code. So this one is constant string reference right operand, right? And all I need to do over here is to say return operator plus equal with R operands M data and be done with it. I don't need to write any code anymore. Now my code can actually work. If I run the program, I get errors. What is the error? Stupid compiler. Okay. And it's a good idea to do a fuel name. <laughs> okay. See out full name. So let's go through this one by one. One argument constructor happens. Then the default constructor happens. Same thing, but it's null. Then plus equal with another one happens. Whoops, I pushed the wrong button. Then uh, the plus equal with the right operand happens. The m data at right is Fred, and the, the current one m data is blank. So it's going to go in here. Is it blank? I think it's blank. So it comes, it comes, it comes in here. And it says CSDR has something. Yes, it does. It's going to say M data with length of the current one, but the length of the current one is zero. Therefore, it's just going to be the length of thread. So length of thread is going to be allocated to it. I don't have anything in here. It's going to skip it, make this one uh, an empty string, then copy thread into the new M data, update M length to four, uh, delete the current one, which is nothing, because uh, uh, it's null, nothing's going to happen. Another mistake, all of you, many of you, check the data before you don't need to do that. Yes, sir. 
Give me line number. Why? If I delete it. So this is what happens, essentially. I think I can do this in here. Give me a second. Give me a second. Give me a second. Give me a second. So this is what So this is what I have. So this is data, right? And it either points to something or it doesn't. Correct? And this is my C string. Correct? So what I do in my line of code over there that you don't see, in my line of code, what I do if I can drag this out, it kind of shows what's going on. Ah, forget it. Anyways, in my line of code, this is what I'm doing. I'm saying That's better. Oh my God, this automatic finger of Windows kills me. All right, there we go. Okay, so I have new M data, so that's my new M data, right? And I say it's the length of this one and that one, correct? Plus one. So it creates this one, length of that one and that one together, correct? Then it says if this exists, copy everything in here. So this one will come right down to here, correct? Then in the second one, it says concatenate this one to here. So it's going to come over here, correct? And this will be null. Are we okay? Now, <clears throat> where am I? Now it deletes M data, which means this will be gone, correct? And then it says, make m data where m new and new data is pointing. So essentially, this is going to point to this one. Correct? The function ends. This is a local variable. It's gone. This is the argument. It's gone. And this is what it's left. If I have deleted new data, what I accomplish will be gone. Am I making sense? Yeah. All right. <laughs> Sorry. It needed this illustration, whatever it is. OK. <clears throat> so that's that. And then uh, M data is set. So walk through it one more time. It comes, comes out. And the second time, this time actually gets really a string. So in here, I have space Solomon over there. And, and the data, the old data that I have, <clears throat> points to Fred, OK? So it comes over here, allocates memory to size of both, uh, copies the first one. Now, new M data will be only Fred. It comes over here, concatenate the second one. Now, the new M data will be Fred Solimanlu. Then it uh, puts the length of both in here, deletes Fred, sets the old thing to point to the new one, comes over here, and when it prints, obviously, it's going to print Fred Solomon, right? And <clears throat> done. Are we okay with this? Are we okay? Yes. Mm -hmm. So M data is the old dynamic memory. The other way, I'm setting M data to new M data. It's bigger. We did. Line number 93. So M length was four initially. So I added that one. Does that make sense? All right. <clears throat>
Now, I think the chairs are saying it's break time, right? Correct, correct. Okay. So we'll save this. <coughs> I'm going to pause it. Remind me to read to the. All right. So we have done this. Uh, fine, fine. But we can uh, do stuff like this. So we can actually make this thing work even better by doing something like this. I can have, say, Surname is, say, Soleil, and I want to be able to do this. I want to be able to say full name is name plus uh, that one plus surname. How can I do that? Okay. Now, to do something like this, I need to overload the plus operator. Now, it has to be a binary operator that accepts a string and a C string. And then the result of that should be a string plus another string. So exactly like plus equal operator that I had, I have to have plus operator binary created. I do not like helpers. I need to as a constant. exact same strategy that I have done with the other one <clears throat> means I'm going to reuse my code. So let's do this. So if I want to create this one, what do I need to do? I need to create a string to return, right? Correct? This string should be containing the left operand, right? So, target of this, so all I need to do is to say, so what is it called in here? called <clears throat> right copy constructor is called <clears throat> and then I know I have the functionality to do this right correct and now I'm gonna do 
Done. Correct? Just copy this code and then write it in a better way. So this is the code that is perfectly good. First, let's realize that. This is perfectly good code. It works amazingly. Not, whoa, whoa, whoa. And nothing's wrong with this. So this is the code. Seriously? And I want to make it better. First of all, what is plus equal returning, people? What is plus equal returning? Reference. reference of who? Ret, correct? So I don't need to write that. I can simply write over here. Correct? the case, why do I even need the ret? So this is the second stage of it, and that's good too. So this is good too, but if I say string as if I'm calling the constructor and pass this to it, what happens? And then what I do? Oh. Done. Now you're right. You know. Write the top one. value This is a beautiful code, okay? And you can do the exact same thing with the other one. I don't have to explain it. So just let me like literally you can simply say const string reference uh, s. Write s over here and be done. Second one is the except the plus. Now doing this, if you run this beautiful 
tester of mine if we don't have any errors. It comes over here, creates all these good stuff. The first one that is going to get called, it's going to go with a C string that is an empty space. It creates the plus equal or all the good stuff, it returns it. So the nameless comes back. You see the copy constructor is called. It makes a copy and assign and all the good stuff. Now it comes out. And now that goes, so plus equal happens to that copy. So that copy will actually, that is at left side, will actually have the plus equal with the C string. So the space will be added to it. And then you go back into the main object. And now the copy is deleted coming out back to this uh, plus equal. So at left side over here, this is done now. I have a nameless that is actually, you can't see it because it's nameless. I cannot click on it, show anything. Okay, now that one with plus happens, goes to the next one. So now this is the nameless one. So if you actually do this, you will see that it has Fred and a space after that. You see that? And now it creates a copy out of that copy. And then it calls a plus equal with the other one, yada, yada, yada. And it comes back. And now at the whole right hand side, I have a nameless that has a namespace, that one. And now assignment happens between this and that to go to full name. And then it's copied, and the full name does the yada, yada, yada. It goes back in, and now full name actually prints Fred Soleil. And you see, nothing happened, right? Just one line of code. So essentially, if I run the code, this is what I have, right? Please take a look. How many things happen behind the scenes for that? Now we can do, yes. So you just wanted an extra, or like a regular C string on the left hand side, plus right hand side, our own custom string, then you could set up a. You don't need to do anything. Take a look. A string, another. I specifically did this so it becomes an assignment, right? Then I'm going to say over here, uh, oh, wait a minute. Sorry, 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 sorry. sorry. I have to turn that mess of a thing off because that thing's going everywhere, right? Let's turn it off so we don't see much. Oh. What the devil happened? Let me see. I thought it's going to work. It's not working. Nice. Let's see. No, 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 no. Give me a second. Give me a second. Give me two seconds, please. I want to try something. Ah, uh, let me walk through it. I want to see. I want to see what happens. 
what I expected to happen and what is not happening. You're right, we need a helper function, but I thought we don't, we're not gonna need it. Let's see, I wanna see what happens actually and why. So I'm gonna come over here, okay, and I'm gonna do an F11. Now I know what happened. I was hoping was this. Let me let me try something. Let me try something. But if I remove that one, if we didn't have Boolean, if we didn't have Boolean, this might have happened. cast it now we this is a place that is a perfect example where we actually need, with double quotes around it, a helper function. We really need it. A helper function that we need requires the following signature. We look at this, obviously the helper function is operator plus. At left side, it receives a constant character pointer left operand, right? And at right side, it receives a constant string reference right operand, correct? What does it return? A string of its own. It cannot return a reference because it doesn't belong to anything. Now, to implement this, again, we have all the tools we need. Implementing all these different variations are just a matter of seconds. So. Again, I have a string. I create a string out of left operand. So I do what I wished compiler would have done. So now I have a nameless string at left, correct? Now what I'm going to do? And I'll do the rest. But e I'm not going to do plus for this one. Why? If I do plus, lots of things by value are passed. Plus equal is more efficient because it returns the reference of the string, right? And the result's going to be the same anyway, so I'm going to do right operand. It's going to be slightly more efficient than the other one. Okay? And now if I go back over here, hopefully instead of Al, we're going to have over there Alfred Soleil. Okay? Are we okay? Part, yes. No, no, no. I don't know what you say. I don't even think about it.
I can actually write something like this. Take a look. You can add lots of bells and whistles to the string of yours and do anything you want with it. I can go string reference operator plus plus. So this is a prefix, right? This is a prefix, right? So I'm going to say adds a space before. And I can do a, why is it giving me an error in here? Oh, definition should be green, isn't it? Why is it giving me an error? Am I making a mistake? I don't think so. Oh, shh. thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I thought I'm inside the class. Seriously. Okay, so let's do that again. So if I want to add a space after, I can go string operator plus plus int adds a space after, right? And created these like, uh, oh, actually before. Yeah, I think I can. So <clears throat> how do we manage this without writing much code? I just want to reuse my code. I'm lazy. So how do I do that? I need to add something before this one. Very expensive, but I, I can do it, but expensive. I can say this is equal to space plus this and return this, right? Ugliest thing I've ever written, but I think it works. Would it work? So, yes, it will work because uh, right, separate name rest will be set to the work. The right point, the other one is much easier. The one that, I, that you want to add after, that's much easier. The one that you want to add after is essentially Right? We have that one already. Okay, so now if you want to, you have, you can, so this one is going to be C operator plus many kinds dot CPP. And the other one is going to be So I'm going to say, I'm going to do this and see if it's going to work out. So I'm going to say, <clears throat> uh, name plus plus, see out, uh, name, soleil. So it should be, a, there should be a space between the two, right? And then I'm going to say plus plus name. And I'm going to say C out <clears throat> so this should so it should have is going to print Fred space Soleil, right? And, and the other one is going to print Al space because now it has a space before and after. Let's see if it's going to work. There we go.
OK, so now I can add space before and after. Again, <clears throat> to see what we have done, always do this to appreciate that little line of code, how many things are getting created and destroyed. OK? It's not much, actually. It was much less than I expected. But anyways, oh, another thing, very important thing. I have three minutes. <clears throat> First of all, initialization area. What is initialization area? We have no use for it over here, but I can explain. So for example, let's say, let's say I want to overwrite this initialization. I want to overwrite this initialization. Let's say, uh, and set this data to something else. I don't know. Um, no. Like, let's say, give me a second. Yeah, this is a perfect example. I'm going to teach, please remind me to talk about initialization area the next day you are coming in in a lab, OK? Initialization area. <clears throat> I'm not going to talk about it. Instead, I'm going to talk about uh, indexes. <clears throat> so you can make this thing look like an array too. <clears throat> so for example, I can do this. I can, I can do something like this. So this one is. Take a look. Very quick. Say I have, OK? I want to be able to say, see out, name starts with name 0. I want to have an index show the first character. <clears throat> and ends with name, say, name.length minus 1. I want to write this. So it's like an array. For doing this, you can overload the index operator, because this is literally an index, an operator that accepts an integer. OK? So <clears throat> what I can do over here, <clears throat> is simply create something like this. Character, reference, operator, index, that receives a size t, because it cannot be negative, index. It's not going to be a constant, because I want to be able to treat it like an array. I want to be able to change it. So in here, I'm going to say return. Uh, M data, and then <clears throat> I'm going to say return M data, and that I'm going to always make a mistake. So in here, M data, I'm going to say index mod M length. Done. So what happens is that when this index operator is called the C string using an index and M like so. If it is one, it will be one out of four, it will be one. If it is four, it will be four out of four, it goes back to zero. So you can never exceed the size, it never dies. Never, you can never kill anything other than your own data. And if I run the program, you will see that it actually runs like, starts with F and ends with D. Exactly, and I can change that. And I can actually say name zero is set to say G. And now it's going to be <clears throat> dread, OK? You can change it. <clears throat> but again, if it's an empty thing, then you're going to be in trouble. If it's an empty thing, we're going to be in trouble at 126. So I'll continue this the next day we are coming in.
please review these before you come in next day. Please. Yeah, I, I want to I wanna post this first and then you can talk to me.